and by Ashland Oil Incorporated and its Valvoline and Super America divisions, interested in improving quality education in West Virginia. Hi, I'm Commander Mark, and this is the Secret City, a place of fun, fantasy, and adventure. Today is club day here in the Secret City, so we'll have lots of special guests. But first, we're going to draw a transportation system for the underplanet world. Now, I think we ought to name it, too. How, how about the tube? The drones have to move around on the underplanet, right? So we're going to create this addition to the Secret City mural. Expert paper cutter Ramona Jablonski is here today, and she'll show us how easy and how much fun paper cutting can be. Now, I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, so Zebtron's here, and he'll tell you how easy it is to join. Secret City Club members Reed Miller, Sharon Kim, David McKay, and Sarah Vicker are joining us for the special club day. We have a lot going on, so let's go to it. Now, here's what you need to follow along. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, and your guest notebook so you can take some notes on paper cutting. Now, you gather those materials, and I'll be right back. Now, we have two people that are going to join us today. We have club member Sharon and club member Reed. Are you all blasted up and you're ready to go? Yep. Yeah. Okay, loosen go. your hands up. Get ready. Are your pencil sharp? Yep. Okay. We have our piece of paper. We're going to create a transportation system for the underground, the underplanet area. And it's going to be a tubular type of transportation. And it's going to be riding on a magnetic track. It'll be a, a magnetic transportation system. So we'll start with a guideline slanting away in direction one or up here to the right, a real light guideline. This will be the track, and then we'll draw the bottom of the transportation system following the track, real light guideline and a light guideline. Now, from right here, direction seven, and then a vertical line and a vertical line. Now see, these line up with the sides of your paper. Make sure you take your pencil. It's not slanting down, it's a vertical line. And then we'll dome the top of the transportation system. You see, this is a flat bottom because it rides on a magnetic stream or a magnetic rod going between the roadway and the transportation vehicle. Now, slant this away in direction one. This is a guideline all the way across. And we'll break this up into different compartments. And then the, the compartments will be connected together with a tube. Now, that important word, that magic word, which is contour, see, the contour of the tube is round. It's a very curved surface. And so we'll use contour around the surface. You see how these lines wrap around the shape of the tube? Now, this is one section. Let's do another compartment back here. Follow the contour. You see how this is a curve right here? It matches the same curve, and it matches this curve. Direction what? Direction 7. Slide this off. Direction 1 and direction 1, and it matches the tube right here. Another compartment. And then we'll draw one more compartment. Start back here curve it around, and then go up to the left, or in direction seven. Direction one, and then this tube gets smaller as it goes away. Now we have to connect the different compartments of the transportation. How do you want to connect it? You can put a tube, you can put two tubes, or you can put a square block. It's up to you. I think I'm going to go ahead and draw a cylinder-shaped tube. So I'll draw one guideline right through the center. Try to match that line right here, and I'll follow that guideline for the connecting tube. This is the little Oh, a vacuum tube so that passengers can get between the two areas. And then curve the end right here. And then a light guideline in direction 7, and then thicken that up a bit and draw the inside thickness. Now, let's take a moment and get to know one of our club members a little bit better. Hello, I am Reed Miller. I'm 13 years old, and I'm going to 8th grade at Owens Mills Junior Senior High School. I have been going to a special art school for two years. I would like to go to college and then go into the field of graphic design. Here is an example of my work. It is of a tra travel poster of Japan and is of a dragon. I combine markers to make different colors on the dragon. I like art because it allows me to put something on paper and make it into something. I also like it because anybody can do it. Now, Reed, I really like the way you put the thickness right here. It's going up in this direction. It's following this guideline right here. Your transportation system is going to be really complete once you put the shading down here and you shade the tube. 
taken care. Do you know the difference between shading the tube and shading the square surface? Yeah, on a square surface, you shade the whole surface. On a, on a cylinder or a circle, you just shade from top or from the bottom up. You blend it, huh? We have a special guest today, Ramona Jablonski. She's a paper cutter, and she's with two other club members, and they're experimenting with some paper cutting. Did you know that paper cutting is a craft that you don't have to buy anything special to do? You can use things that you have already at home, things like newspaper and any kind of scissors. They don't have to be anything special. Today, club members Sarah and David are here to help me show you how easy it is to do paper cutting. So guys, if you would each take a piece of paper, we'll get started. The first thing you want to do is to fold your paper in half one time. If we do this, we now have two layers of paper connected by a folded edge. Am I right? Mm -hmm. All right. If I start to cut through these two layers of paper, everything that I cut is going to be multiplied times two. That's the first rule of paper cutting. Everything that you cut is going to be multiplied times the number of layers of paper that you're going to be cutting through. So why don't you try it? Put your scissors on the folded edge and start cutting. Cut all the way around and finish on the folded edge. You can cut the same kind of shape that I'm cutting, or you can cut something entirely different, something that nobody has seen before. Unfold it and let's see what you have. In my case, I cut one half of a tulip shape through two layers of paper. One half and one half makes a whole tulip. Very good. How are you doing there? Let's pick up this piece and see what you have. Very good. All right, that's the start. Now, fold your design in half again, as it was when you were cutting. We'll talk about the second rule of paper cutting. It has to do with the folded edge. I can do all kinds of things to this folded edge, and you can too. I can cut long, pointy shapes out of it. I can cut great, big, fat shapes out of it. I can cut little teeny tiny snips out of it. But what can I not do? Can't destroy it. I can't destroy it. When I'm finished cutting, some part of that folded edge has to still be there, so my design will be in a single piece when I unfold it. So find your folded edge, use your scissors to cut designs out of it. They can be designs like mine. They can be something entirely different. Very nice, Sarah. Take another piece and see if you can do a design that's similar, but perhaps a little fatter this time. How are you doing, David? Pretty good. Pretty good. Unfold it there when you finish that piece, and let's take a look at it. Okay, very nice. That's a very nice start. Good. You take another piece, and we'll come back in a few minutes and show you some of our finished products. Contour. Now, what we'll do is add some contour lines wrapping around the tube, our under-planet transportation system. We call it the tube. Now watch this. Wrap this contour line around here. Wrap a contour line around here for the first section. Let's see, I'm matching the contour. I could even curve these even more. Contour. Look at this. Match this curve and curve it a lot. See how it really wraps around? These are handy when you're drawing arms and legs or when you're drawing tubes or when you're drawing anything round, any round surface, you can really help give the illusion to your eye that the drawing is really three-dimensional because of contour, contour line. Shade the left side all the way up and down. I'll put some headlights here for the transportation system so in the dark tunnels of the underground that it can see where it's going. And then we'll shade underneath here also. And I always use my finger to blend the shading so it's a smoother tone. And then we'll shade underneath here just a little bit of tone over here to set this band across apart from the object. Okay, and then you can just blend that up. See, it gives a little metal look to it. See how it looks metal? This is a metal reflected, reflective surface here. A little bit of shading on the inside right here. And also over here. A little bit underneath. It gets lighter as it comes up this curved surface. A little bit underneath. And it gets lighter as it comes up the curved surface. And of course, I use my finger again. You can do that too. <laughs> okay, you can get into your drawing and make those little sound effects. Now let's put a little bit of darkness here. 
And look, it gets nice and dark, especially up underneath there. Especially up underneath here. And it blends down lighter and lighter. I want to challenge you to stretch your imagination and to explode on your piece of paper with your imagination poured out and create your own transportation system for the under planet. Okay, don't, you don't have to copy exactly what I have. You can put all kinds of different little get nooks and crannies and gadgets on it. I'm going to challenge you, Reed, and you, Sharon, to do that under planet transportation system too. Okay. All right? What kind of transportation system do you think you can do? Uh, what kind of tracks it would have or what kind of energy it would run on? We'll talk about that in a little while, all right? Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing every day, 20 or 30 minutes a day. And the super magic word to keep in your mind is contour. <laughs> I enjoy drawing different types of transportation systems. I like to draw solar scooters and moon movies. This week, if you draw a transportation system for the underplanet, you will become an automatic member of the Secret City Club. Here is a drawing by Reed Miller. It is of an underplanet transportation system. It is very nice. I imagine it goes fast. Beep, beep. Send your drawing to Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. Beep, 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 beep. Sarah and David have finished their first paper cutting project and have mounted it on colored paper so that you can get a better look at it. They got so excited about what they're doing that I can't stop them cutting. They continue to cut. So, guys, how would you like to do something a little more complicated now? Yeah. All right. All right. Take another piece of paper, and this time, we're going to start out folding it just as we did the last time. Then we're going to fold it in half again. Good. Excellent. If we started cutting now, how many layers would we be cutting through? Four. Four, so everything that we cut would be repeated four times on our design. We're going to get fancier than that. We're going to fold it, this time a diagonal fold, one more time. And how many layers are we going to be cutting through this time? Six. Six? Let's check it and see. What do you say, David? I say eight. You say eight. I think you're right, because when we were back at this stage, we were cutting through four, mm -hmm. and when we double four, that gives us eight layers. So if I were to take my scissors and I were to make a long curvy cut through eight layers of paper, I should then see that long curvy cut eight times when I unfold my design. Let's look and see if it works. Here it is once, twice, two, three times, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it worked, didn't it? All right, would you like to, now that you have your folded paper packet, make a cut from one folded edge to the other. Very good. And unfold it and let's see what you have. How are you doing there, David? Pretty good. Pretty good? Okay, good, Sarah. Excellent, excellent. How about you, David? Okay, you've got to start. All right, now, remember we were talking about the folded edge. In our first cutting, we had one folded edge, and we cut designs out of it, and we were be sure that some part of the folded edge was left when we were finished, so our design stayed in a single piece. Look at this paper packet. We have a folded edge over here, but we also have one over here, so we have two folded edges to concern ourselves with. Same rule applies. We can do all... Hello. Hello, Zeptron. Hello, club members. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I have been observing you and I'm very interested in learning how to mm -hmm. cut paper, too. We are having a wonderful time making paper cutting. Would you like to join us? Yes, I would. I saved you a pair of yellow scissors. I like these scissors. I thought you might like that. They match my glasses. Take a piece of paper, 
see what you can do with those scissors and sarah and david we're talking about the folded edge and how even though we have two folded edges here the same rule applies we can take all kinds of shapes out of those folded edges but what can we not do what is the rule destroy the folded edge. we cannot destroy the folded edge when we're finished finished cutting some part of this folded edge has to still be here and some part of this folded edge has to still be here and if we remember that rule our design will hold together in a single piece when we're finished from Roger Blonsky, i am very confused my paper cutting is not coming out quite the way that i want to can you please give me further instructions? I certainly can. Let me show you, Zeptron. We start out with a piece of paper and we fold it in half one time. Oh, I am observing. One time. I have some radical drawings to share with you in the Secret City Gallery. Now remember, once you learn these magic words, you can conquer that flat piece of paper. It's up to you and it's up to your practice. Now let's like take a look at the first drawing right here. This is Betsy's drawing, and take a look at her inhabitant of the moon, or the planetscape. You see, there's a little frog right there. Nice design. It's a line drawing. And a little crown's floating in the water. Looks like the frog's about to reach into the pond and grab the crown back out of it. Let's look at the next inhabitant of the planet. This stump by Tim. It looks almost like a robot, doesn't it? Isn't this a neat design? He uses shading, and he uses the super important magic word today, a little bit of contour lines on both of the tubes. How far have you gotten on your transportation system? Well, Sharon and Reed have been working diligently plowing over that piece of paper and drawing a transportation system. Sharon, you're drawing some kind of a worm here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you have a live transportation system. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. really, and you have a little, let me, let me show here. Take a look at this. You have contour lines wrapping around the worm to give it this curved effect. It's beautiful. You have, what is this right here? Well, there, it's all underground because the worm travels underground, so this is, an underground transportation, and these okay. are just um, stalagmites, I guess. Okay. That are there. Mm -hmm. Stalactites and stalagmites hanging and um, coming up from the, the ground. Now, what is this right here? That's a person that's riding on the worm. Looks like a woman with her long hair. Uh huh. That's and there'll beautiful. be more people. Okay, well, you keep working on that, and let me take a look at Reed's. Reed, tell me about your transportation system, the beginning well, of it, right here. Well, I'm just beginning now. Well, it's like a a box and it curves on the bottom so it can rotate faster mm -hmm. and it's like a triangle on the top so tall people can stand in the back <laughs> sure people can stand it's like spot. one of those cars at the top pops up right right and a little doorway that comes down and people can walk up the ramp okay what kind of energy does this run on well it runs on by, practically by itself that's what this down here is for so it's self-perpetuating well that's right. an interesting idea save a lot of money on fuel huh uh -huh. you know this gives me an idea what you're doing right here is with these contour lines. Take a look up here, both of you. If I was drawing a worm right along here, and I have the worm going along, and we'll just draw, make pretend, we'll start with a tube shape. The contour lines are really important because they help give the idea of the surface of the worm wrapping around. That's a good idea. It's a really perfect explanation of contour lines. Now look at this, see how much these curve? I'm gonna curve these lines even more than I did up here to show you contour. See how that wraps around? It wraps around, it wraps around, it wraps around, all the way around. And look at this, I can get, even give it almost a, a real soft look, a, almost a bubble look to the worm if I go along like this, okay? And you can put some kind of a round head over here or have someone sitting on there. And when you shade these little contour lines, if you shade, if you get a little visitor there, nice and dark right here, lighter as it moves up, and you take your finger and you blend it across. Lighter, right, dark world right here. Blend it up. Notice how I, I take the shadow and I follow the shadow up the side just a bit. Notice how I'm doing that? And it goes along the bottom here. Okay. Now this, these right here, these little rocks in this formation on the bottom is a very, very good idea. Let's see how the paper cutters are doing right now. Now I understand. How is this design? That is lovely. It shows that you certainly do understand how to make paper cutting. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't that nice? Thank you very much. Very nice. 
one of the things that sarah and david have done is to mount their designs on a colored background to show them up better so i thought i would show you how simple and easy it is to do that job all you need is a little bit of glue a piece of construction paper and your paper cutouts as you can see sarah and david are putting just little tiny spots of glue on their design it doesn't have to be a whole lot because after all this is just a very light piece of paper that we're going to attach to another piece of paper so once you have put little tiny spots of glue over the back of your design it's very easy to turn it over very carefully center it and press it down very gently to make a design hold onto a piece of paper so we can see it. That is very, very pretty. I like that purple. Would you like to make another cutting, Zetron? I would like that very much. Perhaps one that's a little more complicated this time. Yes. We'll start out and fold the paper once. We'll fold it a second time. Remember the rule of the folded edges. You can take anything out of them you want, but what can you not do? You cannot destroy the you, folded edge. You cannot destroy the folded edge. Very important destroy. to remember that. Here's Sarah's new design. That is also very attractive. Let's put it up here where we can see it. And David, how are you doing? Very nice. That is also very, very good. We'll put this up here, too. Would you like to learn another one? Yeah. Oh, sure. Take another piece of paper and let's do something entirely different. This time, as usual, we'll start and fold the paper in half. Fold the paper in half again. Commander Mark will certainly enjoy all of these paper cuttings. We must remember to show them to him. We certainly will. Thank you for helping us out today. Thank you. Contour lines help give that really round-looking shape to your drawing. Let me see your drawing right here. This is beautiful. Well, Boy, not done, but this is beautiful. Take a look at this. The lines are wrapping around. Contour lines. And look at she even put another little creature right here. What's this creature's name? Snork. Snork? <laughs> That's a good name. That's creative. And what about this right here? What's her name? Um, she doesn't have one. She's, she's the nameless oh, woman Heron right in the window. Heron say? Yes. That's a good idea. Now, you're going to fill in some more detail back here, maybe a little cone in the sky, and then you have a finished picture. That's beautiful. Let's see how Red Reed, sorry about that, Reed. Let's, let me see how you use contour lines in your drawing. Okay, you have some contour lines. See your pencil? You have contour lines wrapping around the two back here. That's beautiful. You have one, two, three, four contour lines. And even if you added some contour lines to this round connection between these two fence posts, that might give it a round shape. Okay. okay. I want to take a look at your drawing and see how you ended up your transportation system. It's a couple pages back here, isn't it? Well, you sure go through a lot of paper. You practice a lot. Nice shading. Blended it up. And there's contour lines right there. I was looking for contour. See how that wraps around the contour? Now, if you can do something for me, if you can add two contour lines here and two contour lines here, I think that would really give it the round, you know, cylinder shape. Okay? Let me take a look at your lesson, how you finished with your transportation system. Okay. You like drawing really large, huh? Giant <laughs> drawings. This is getting all, you all hyped up. You did a real good mood when you start drawing. I see your headlights right here, and your contour lines are beautiful, different tone. Wraps around, wraps around. And it wraps around right here. And the contour lines would even help this connecting tube, you know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this little highlight right here, what'd you do? You take an eraser and just touch it with an eraser? Oh, no, when I shaded it and I just left it out. You consciously just left it out. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful drawing. Contour lines really help your drawing out. You go ahead, if you want to, add a few more contour lines to the connecting tube right there. Just helps give your drawing a really round-looking shape. I'm going to show you right here one more example of contour lines. I like Sharon's idea of taking a uh, this two lines wrapping around and leaving a reflection at the top. See if we have a tube there, and we shade all along here, but we leave a reflection. Look what happens. You see that? It's nice. It looks like a light shining around the top of it. Get nice and dark up here and lighter. It moves up. 